Well, good morning, CSL. I'm so glad to be home with you again. <laughs> I'm Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm the spiritual director here, and I have been on a little journey. Yeah. <laughs> I had the pleasure last time I was here with you, I was here with my uh, gal pal, the wonderful Dr. Reverend Michelle Wadley, and we had a wonderful morning with you on August 6th. I went to Asilomar after that, and it was a very uplifting experience. I had a wonderful time with colleagues in the amazing location. There were wonderful speakers, and um, gosh, there was a sense of, of newness. The energy was, it felt like the energy was shifting. We had a lot of new faces on the stages giving talks throughout the week, and the music was amazing. And I think I floated out of a Silomar on a cloud, <laughs> quite touching the ground. I had about a 36-hour turnaround, and off to Chicago I went. And uh, I went to Chicago for the Parliament of World Religions. It was uh, pretty amazing. There were 10,000 people in Chicago for this purpose. There were people from all kinds of walks, uh, various faiths. Uh, the Sikhs have a beautiful tradition called Lagder, where they, uh, because they are so committed to ending world hunger, they serve lunch every day to every, anyone who wants to be fed. So between 11 and 2, hundreds of people file through and are fed by these beautiful Sikhs who are putting their feet to the floor with what they value and what's important to them. It was really beautiful. And, and, and Tuesday I had the opportunity of being in the exhibitor hall and representing CSL. And then Wednesday, I came down with COVID. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I'll spare you my drama. I, I really thought I was going to skirt by that one. <laughs> um, and I'm really grateful vac for vaccines. At least that's how I approached the COVID. And, um, and I was well taken care of. Uh, but in the meantime, I felt like I got a really amazing um, shot of inspiration from all these individuals uh, who were showing up to to really speak um, as what was this we talked about speaking truth to condition really speaking truth to the conditions of the world while there were different practices the thing that we really had in ca common was a deep love and compassion for humanity um, and that was powerful even though I only got to experience a a few days of that. Um, we are finishing up a month-long um, theme of looking at passion and purpose. And I could speak to you about how this scientifically works, that the passion is the energy that we tap into, and then purpose is how we direct it. And so it's this it's scientific, actually. When you have a deep and abiding passion for something that you value, and, and then you use that, um, that deep caring and the values that you hold, and when you put them together, there's really nothing that can stop you. And we've witnessed that in many uh, heroes over the millennia, if you will, the people that we've watched that have used their passion and their intention or their purpose to align them to make great change in the world. Of course, people like Gandhi and, and uh, Martin Luther King come to mind immediately. Uh, these are perfect examples of people who um, merged their passion and their purpose together so that they could make great change in the world, so that they too could exhibit what I witnessed at the parliament of people who took their faith and the things that were really important to them and are um, standing in their values by walking the talk, by not just standing up here and sharing wisdom with people, but actually um, using their hands and their feet and, and their energy and their resources in the direction of their values. 
like a really big thing. What was I, who was I supposed to be? What was this thing called purpose that I was supposed to understand? And I remember making it very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, this, you know, I had this wonderful opportunity in a workshop where people were, we, we were looking at purpose and the, there was a, the workshop facilitator asked us to share what we thought our purpose was with the room and I raised my hand and I said about three sentences of what I thought my purpose was and um, I got to be the guinea pig in front of the group <laughs> and she helped me pare it down and pare it down and pare it down until it got really simple and very clear that my purpose is to reveal love. And it, and it resonated, I felt it, I understood it. And, uh, and from that moment on, when I, when I got that clear and I got that concise with my purpose, it's been really easy to recall that and bring that forward when I'm thinking about what my purpose is. Now the trick sometimes is generating the passion. <laughs> and... Um, you know, these last 12 days of uh, being sick, I wasn't feeling especially passionate about much. <laughs> I was feeling really passionate about my pillow <laughs> and my teas and the things that brought me comfort. But, it, you know, it, I, I could feel the this, this sort of the, the, if you will, almost this draining of energy and, and, and excitement and passion and, and that happens to us. You don't, have to, you don't have to get a virus to have that experience where you feel like you're, as, I, as one gentleman said to me once, um, when I say my prayers, I feel like I'm, pray I'm just talking to the sheets, you know? You don't have to have uh, a particular experience or, or event to bring us to that place of losing touch with our passion and that's one of the reasons that we come to communities like this. We come to communities so that we can remember our passion and our purpose, that we can see it reflected in the love of the people that we are in community with. I had a lovely conversation with somebody yesterday who knows who she is, who talked about her passion and how this, this community had changed her life because there were people that were like-minded souls that were open-hearted and that embraced her and loved her exactly where she was as she walked into her passion. And if I had to guess, I'd want to say that's really what it's all about. <laughs> it's really about being there for each other when we forget, being there for each other when we don't have a clue or feel lost, being there for each other so that we can love each other through whatever life serves up. And uh, dare I say, life serves up a lot, right? Life serves up a whole lot of stuff these days. And I witness the energy where people get really attached to the events of the day, <clears throat> get really attached to their concerns and the things that are happening out in the world of condition and, and, I, and I, maybe it's just me, but when I let myself get caught up like that, it's easy for me to forget that whatever's happening out here in the world is actually second cause. It is, and, and that's RSBS, religious science. You can figure out what BS stands for. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, the second cause is that when we begin to, un when we begin to in give our power to the condition as opposed to giving our power to consciousness. And it's, and it's, let me just tell you how it shows up for me. I'll get passionate about something, I'll have concerns about something, and I drop into something I call problem solving. And I want to solve it, I want to fix it, I want to make it go away, I want to, I want to, it, you know, have something tangible that I can put my hands around. And what I can tell you is the longer that I practice this philosophy and way of life, the emptier the experience of problem solving becomes for me. It becomes 
almost like just going through the motions, like there, I'm, I'm missing something, like I'm not quite attached to what it is I'm supposed to be paying attention to. And I'm having that experience. There are big things that are happening in our international movement, and there are big things that are kind of coming up for us in our community that I'm looking at, and, and I'm, you know, I can feel myself reach for that great skill of problem solving and, and figuring out. And yet it leaves me wanting because I haven't, I'm not touching passion and purpose when I'm dropping down just into problem solving. There's a, a fabulous book, I've mentioned it to you before, it's called The Four Pivots by Sean Ginwright. And he talks about moving from ability to come, come in. And here's the, here's the telltale sign that comes up for me. Because when I jump into problem solving first in any situation, that assumes that I know the whole landscape and every possibility of things that can happen. And this is the way we're going to get it straightened out. And I've limited myself to the problem. And I completely miss the opportunities and the possibilities that could be available to me. So when we look at this idea of, of passion and purpose, I think we need to bring our, an open heart and an open mind to what that means and to keep it at this highest level possible so that we can be available for whatever energy, because remember I talked, there's a science to this, the science of the emotion and then the intention the passion and the purpose, that what we can be open and available to this science that wants to move through us, dare I say this divinity that wants to move through us, I actually don't see a difference between the science or the divinity. It's all the same to me. Energy. Energy is forever moving. It is forever reforming itself, it inhabits form, it then vacates form, and then it inhabits form again, and then it vacates form again. And the only thing that really is consistent is our intention and that emotion and intention or passion and purpose that we bring to the situation. And that's what shifts. Now this is there's an art to this. This is really subtle because I can really make a, you know, a, a, a wonderful impact in the world with my problem solving skills. I can, I can do some wonderful things with my ability to, to work things through. But the world needs more than my problem solving today. The world needs my willingness to be open to a greater purpose and needs me to be energetically available to it. As I was knowing that I was going to come here and talk to you again, and I'm sort of not feeling great, but I really want to be here with you, I, um, you know, I have some tools in my toolbox to help me get out of that problem-solving you know, muck and mire kind of consciousness so that I can be ch more open to inspiration. And, um, you know, some of those tools are really obvious. We all use them. They're like affirmations, meditation, uh, prayer, uh, spiritual community, spiritual education, um, lots of tools that we all use. But the one thing that I often find for me that helps me the most is when I can when I can reach into some of those spiritual heroes, those amazing individuals that, that light me up when I, when I read some of their wisdom. <coughs> and uh, the, the sage and muse that really spoke to me this week was, was uh, Saint Teresa of Avila. And I've spoken to you about, to some of you about her before. Um, what I can tell you is that in the 15th century, she was a serious spiritual badass. <laughs> a, 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 a woman who came up from Jewish heritage, her family denied their religion 
to survive. That was the only way you would survive during the Spanish in Inquisition in the 15th century, was to completely deny who you are and say you're going to be like everybody else. I've oversimplified that quite a bit, but you know what I'm talking about. And, and yet she, was, she had some, some drive in her to, to be available to spirit. And she founded the Carmelite order of nuns, which, uh, which grew and flourished in a time of great contraction in the world. And the reason it grew and flourished the thing that attracted to me her to, attracted me to her first was her business acumen. She was a businesswoman. She she built structures and she negotiated in a man's world and was able to grow this amazing movement. That was the external, the you know, the problem solver in me kind of resonated with the problem solver in her. But it was her passion and her devotion to her faith. And teaching that faith that really moved me. And the reason it moved me was because in a time in a world where the uh, authorities that were in charge were saying that if you want to experience God, you must come through me. And that's what the, the religions of that day were saying in the Spanish Inquisition in the 15th century. And here was this very petite woman <laughs> who was training her nuns that God lived within, that they needed no surrogate to God, and that if they wanted to have that deep devotional experience with God, that their journey was not to go out to the men of the cloth, but to go within to their own heart and their own soul to find God. That's badass stuff in the 15th century. And I am so inspired by people who are so clear about what they love and what their intention is and their purpose is that they can merge those things and move forward. That kind of inspiration reminds me that it's okay to scoop myself up from my little you know, strategies of problem solving and step back and say, all right, I'm gonna not know. It's, you know, it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of courage to stand in front of a bunch of people who think you're supposed to know everything and say, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but something does know. And so as we look at this idea, as we wrap up this whole month of um, passion and purpose, I want to suggest that sometimes we get stuck in the muck and the mire because fighting the things that we don't want in the world is safer than longing for the things that we love. That the fighting for, you know, stamping out and, you know, stamping out hunger, getting rid of poverty, you know, fighting against racism, all these things are really important and I'm not suggesting that we don't, you don't think that they're important. But sometimes we get so invested in the strategies because it's safer and we're afraid to truly long for that which we love. That's what happens to me. And so I have to have the courage to drop back into my faith, to drop back into my purpose, to drop back into the things that I'm passionate about and then to trust that when I am clear about my purpose and my passion, the things are going to unfold perfectly. And I stay clear because you help me, each and every one of you, as part of my spiritual community, reflecting those things back to me. And I hope that I can do that for you. Because it's, a, it's an interesting, there are interesting times that we're living in today. And allow that to be the guide, not figuring it out. There are some paybacks for that. There's some really good paybacks for being able to figure stuff out. But I invariably find that I create too small a container for the divine when I do that. So as we end this month of um, looking at passion and purpose, I'll leave you with this wonderful quote from 
our neighbor down the street, uh, Reverend Dr. Christian Sorensen, in his book, Living from the Mountaintop, he writes, without you, infinite potential remains just that, potential. It stays unformed as possibility. It is you who are needed by life for its potential to take form. So make yourselves available, people. Infinite possibility needs you, and it needs your passion, and it needs your purpose. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's do what we do so well, and that is to simply drop into prayer, into that place where we allow our minds and our hearts to be shifted, to be lifted up and expanded to greater possibility. And so I know this, this infinite potential, that one infinite reality is available to all life. And that as we come together as a community or as friends or colleagues or individuals, as we come to this place, this point of recognition, we know that that divine energy, that power that locomotes all life is completely available to us. And so we align ourselves with it. We, we let fall away any of the the smaller details and we grab hold of this power and this presence that wants to express by means of each one. And we allow ourselves to be divine pawns for a power and a presence that only loves life, that only wants to give itself life, that only wants to love into life. And so I declare in this moment that each one of us our beautiful conduits for that power and that presence as we walk out our week, as we drop into our passion, as we get clear about our purpose, I trust that all is in divine right order, no matter what I see around me, and that my part becomes as clear as simply asking the question, what is mine to do, and then listening. And so it is with joy that I simply anchor this, all of this, in, back into the divine presence, the one infinite reality, knowing our deep connection. And then it's with gratitude that I anchor this prayer as together we say, and so it is. Thank you very much, and let's...